course on design of power electronic converters. Today we will begin with the next module that is magnetics design. So uh, to begin with the module let us first uh, review some of the fundamentals of magnetic circuits which you have uh, previously studied. First let us look into the use of magnetics in power electronics. So this is the buck and water circuit. You are very much uh, familiar with it. Uh, we have been using it for our discussions. And so this is the inductor which is uh, there in this power electronic circuit. And this as we have discussed before has to operate at high switching frequencies uh, it depending on the power rating. It, it could be from kilohertz to even hundreds of kilohertz and up to me megahertz also this inductor might uh, be needed. So uh, this is not an inductor which uh, you may be finding out uh, of the shelf. It may be something which has to be designed depending on the specifications of the buck converter. And similarly, there are other non-isolated DC to DC converters which also use inductors and those inductors have to be specially designed based on the specifications of the converter. Then these are isolated DC to DC converters. So this one is a flyback converter and this is a forward converter. So this uh, flyback converter this uh, you can see here there is a transformer here and this is a high frequency transformer and again the switching frequency of this may be in the range of kilohertz and uh, uh, hundreds of kilohertz may be for which this transformer might have to be designed. And uh, this uh, flyback operation is uh, different than the normal transformer step up just simply step up step down operation here. It also stores some magnetic energy and then transfers it to the load side when the switch is off. So that operation takes place so sort of a energy storage also takes place in this uh, transformer of flyback converter like the energy storage that is there in an inductor. So uh, these have to be then specially designed you just cannot buy it from the market uh, from a shop and uh, then put it in your circuit. It, it may happen that you may get some sm a similar specification uh, of a transformer which is off the shelf and you may be able to use it but not always that is possible it depends on the specifications of your converter. Then uh, this is a forward converter here you can see that uh, here there are three windings. This is the primary and this is the secondary and uh, then there is another demagnetizing winding which is the tertiary winding which is uh, uh, denoted here in yellow color. So it is a three winding transformer this again the switching frequency of this MOSFET uh, may be in the range of hundreds of kilohertz and so this transformer then has to be designed accordingly. And uh, unlike this flyback, uh, this does not use uh, storage in the primary and secondary windings for its operation. So this is going to be designed differently than your flyback converter. Then uh, here you see there is another inductor which is uh, similar to the buck converter inductor. So that also has to be designed for this converter. So similarly, there are various other isolated uh, power electronic converters DC to DC converters where um, we need transformers and inductors to be designed. Then apart from your DC to DC converters uh, there are other applications of DC to AC and AC to DC there also we need magnetics. For example here this is what is shown is a what we call it is a back to back converter. So this is a three phase inverter. So it is uh, just extension of an edge bridge it is also called as hex bridge. So you have uh, three legs here now. So this is uh, going to act like an inverter or a rectifier it depends on on this side whether we have a motor or a generator. And on the other side uh, uh, you have the three phase supply 
And again uh, depending on the use whether you have a generator or a motor over here it will act as a rectifier or as an inverter. So, uh, then on this point the voltage that will be there will be switched voltage waveforms. So, what I want to say is that here whatever the voltages that may be, be coming here that may be switched voltage and on this side we have got sinusoidal voltage. So, we can have a filter a simple LC filter may be there or C might not be put this may not be present it may be just connected using inductors or there may be LCL filter that means what I want to say here is that you may have inductors over here as well LCL filters also might be put. So, irrespective of that what I want you to understand here is that that you are going to use inductors here and these inductors are going to be different than your DC to DC converter inductors because on one side it switch C switched voltage another side it has uh, a sinusoidal voltage and uh, then the difference of the two is what the inductor is going to be seeing across it as the voltage. So, the current waveform through it is also going to be different. So, harmonic profile is going to be different and uh, the ratings of the of these inductors are very different than your DC to DC converter inductors and so then they also have to be designed accordingly. So, uh, like this uh, you can explore you will see that uh, different power electronic circuits have uh, requirements of different types of magnetics and so they all have to be designed. Now, in this course uh, we will be discussing the basics of uh, inductors and transformer designs. We will uh, not go into too much of details in the design process uh, because it is not a dedicated course on magnetics design and uh, so it is kind of beyond the scope of this course to cover all the details and go into design of each and every uh, type of inductor or transformer. So, I will give you the introduction the fundamentals of how to do it and then uh, if you need it or if you are interested to learn those things you should be able to learn on your own. So, now let us look into the fundamentals. So, this uh, kind of a diagram uh, is uh, familiar with you. So, if you have conductors which are carrying some current I 1 I 2 I 3 and then if you have a contour if you draw a contour around it and if you trace it then uh, there is a relationship between your this magnetic field intensity H and uh, this contour length and also the total current that is inside that contour. So, uh, you might have already recalled by now what is the law I am talking about it is the Ampere's law. which is your H dot DL over this path C is equal to the double integral over the surface S and is equal to J dot DS where DS is the surface vector which is normal to the surface. It is DS is the incremental surface vector and this is actually in equal to I enclosed whatever is the current that is enclosed in the contour. So, if uh, these are all equal I 1 equal to I 2 equal to I 3 and if you have n number of times uh, uh, it goes through this path inside it. So, then we can write it H L is equal to N I. And this is further written as the MMF magnetomotive force. This is your MMF magnetomotive force, and this unit is given as ampere turns. And also, we can write from here 
the magnetic field intensity H as equal to F by L or you can write it as equal to N I by L which is uh, then the unit becomes amperes per meter. Then another important term is your magnetic flux. So, this magnetic flux is denoted usually by the letter phi and uh, this is uh, equal to the surface integral B dot d s and what is B? B is the magnetic flux density. And so, if uh, B is uniform, if it is uniform then throughout this surface S we can also write it as uh, B dot S. So, uh, in that case your uh, B could be written as uh, phi by S if uh, the angle is 0 between B and S. If the angle is 0 between B and S. So, uh, your angle is uh, 0 degrees that is important then we can write that B is equal to phi by S and uh, this unit is given by your Tesla that is the unit. Now, there is a relationship between your magnetic flux density and magnetic field intensity that is given by B is equal to mu H and what is mu? Mu is the permeability. Permeability of the material. So, if you have a magnetic material then that magnetic material property is uh, one of the properties is the permeability and uh, it indicates uh, how easily the material can be magnetized. So, that is your permeability as uh, high as it is the better as a magnetic material it is going to be means it is more magnetic than something which uh, whose mu value is less. And mu of free space or you can say that of air is denoted as mu 0 and it is equal to 4 pi into 10 power of minus 7 Henry per meter and mu is given as equal to mu r into mu 0 where what is mu r? Mu r is the relative permeability of that material. So, usually for different types of materials it is the relative permeability which is normally given for uh, that material uh, instead of the actual value mu. So, relative permeability is the permeability with respect to the air gap uh, is what is your relative permeability. When you multiply with um, mu 0 then uh, and mu r then that is what is the actual permeability of that material the value that you are going to get. Now, another rule which you should be um, remembering for uh, this discussion is this right hand rule. So, uh, when your fingers are pointing in the direction of the magnetic flux density B, then your thumb points in the direction of the current that is the right hand rule. So, this uh, uh, you will have to apply. Further recall this term lambda which is your flux linkage, flux linkage is equal to n phi where n is the number of turns and this could also be written as n a c into b where b is what it is the cross sectional area. So, here I had uh, uh, given this as s, s could be replaced by a c. So, S was a, a, a general notation 
So, when we are specifically talking about magnetic design, so there will be a core material and the cross sectional area of that core uh, is denoted as AC. So, AC is the cross sectional area of the core. So, this can further be written as NAC we substitute for B. So, it will become NAC mu H and then this can be then further written as NAC mu NI by LC which further could be written as mu AC n square i by l c and so here uh, this term is what you call as the reluctance r. So, then your reluctance is equal to l c by mu a c. So, lambda flux linkage will be equal to n square by reluctance into the current i and this you know that this is your equal to the inductance i multiplied by i. So, L is equal to n square by reluctance. Now, another important law is your Faraday's law. So, Faraday's law you know that what it is it is equal to it is given as V t is equal to d lambda by d t. So, if there is a time varying magnetic field flux phi t passing through closed stationary loop then it induces a voltage and that voltage is given as equal to d lambda by d t and uh, this is equal to also can be written as d n phi by d t. So, then which could be further written as n d phi by d t and then we can then also write it as equal to L d i by d t. So, that is the Faraday's law. And then there is another important law which is your Lenz's law. And uh, what does the Lenz's law say? The Lenz's law say that that if you have um, a, applied flux and that is going to induce voltage and correspondingly there will be a current because of it. The direction of the current will be such that that it produces a flux which opposes the change in the applied flux. So, if you have uh, let us say an applied flux like this phi a t in this direction, then uh, a voltage will be induced in this conductor in, in this uh, surface let us say and then that will uh, be uh, induced to such that the current direction will be such that it opposes this flux phi a t. So, the uh, flux uh, opposite to it will be in this direction phi i t. Okay. And uh, one thing that you should uh, remember is that, that it opposes the change in flux. So, if the flux applied flux is going to increase then it would be such that it will be opposing the increase in the flux that means the flux uh, 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 obtained uh, because of uh, the induced current will be in opposite direction as that of the main flux. Whereas, if the main flux is decreasing then it would try to uh, oppose the decrease in flux that means it will uh, produce a flux which is going to be in the same direction as the main flux. So, this is uh, very very important 
because usually uh, people just remember that it opposes the main flux. It is not that it just opposes the main flux, it opposes the change in the main flux. If it is increasing, it will oppose the increase and so it will be in the opposite direction. If the main flux is decreasing, it will oppose the decrease and then it will produce the flux which is uh, in the same direction as the main flux. Then Further, your uh, permeability that I just uh, uh, told you that this is relationship between B and H and it is a property of the material and uh, so I do not think that, that this is a constant, this is not a constant, it varies depending on the values of H. So, to understand it better, let us uh, look into this uh, diagram. So, for free space, it is more like uh, a constant, this mu 0 value, irrespective of how much h is there, the b, the flux density that you will be obtaining in the, in the free space uh, will hold a linear relationship with h. Whereas, for any other material and especially for magnetic materials, you can approximate it like this that uh, to a certain extent to a certain value of uh, h it, it has a permeability uh, which is higher than your mu 0 and which is what we are denoting as mu r into mu 0. So, this is the relationship that you are going to obtain and after that it kinds of tends to saturate and then it is almost like that you can approximate it like that of the free space. So, that is also called as the saturation flux density, okay. It sort of saturates. So, even if you increase the H, your means if you increase the magnetic field intensity, still your magnetic flux density will not increase in that material, okay. So, this is what an asymptotic uh, line which is shown here. So, this then leads to this uh, when you actually do it what we get is the is the hysteresis curve the or what is called as the BH curve. So, there what you see is that it is not only that your B and H does not have a linear relationship, the relationship is non-linear how much B you get from H you cannot always get it just by multiplying with the, the permeability. It also depends on how much H you are applying and uh, depending on the H the value of mu also changes. Uh, so, this is what is shown by this diagram. Further, when you are applying AC that means you first uh, applied a magnetic field intensity in one direction and then you kept on increasing it and then uh, let us say it uh, reached to the close to the value of saturation. Then you try to decrease the magnetic field intensity and then you apply it in the opposite direction and uh, there also in the opposite direction you went down to the saturation levels and then you try to reduce and then uh, come back to 0. Then if that in that process if we you plot the values of B and H, what you will be getting is this kind of a BH curve. So, and this is what uh, happens because mostly our use of magnetics is in your AC um, uh, applications. So, here what you observe is that, that when your H is 0 at that time there is a non-zero residual magnetic flux density which is present which is uh, denoted here as minus Br and then to make it 0 you need in some magnetic field intensity that is your Hc is the uh, what is called as the coercive force and then as we keep on increasing magnetic field intensity the B increases and finally, it reaches to the saturation value and after that if we start decreasing the value of H, then what will happen? It does not follow the same path, but it follows a different path, a slightly different path. 
okay, it comes back in this uh, path and here what happens is that you can see that again there is a residual flux H is 0, but your flux density is not 0. Then further uh, to make it 0, you have uh, to apply H in the opposite direction which is equal to minus H3 and uh, then further uh, if we increase the magnetic field density in the opposite direction, B increases in the opposite direction and it reaches to the saturation flux density in the opposite direction. And then again if we increase the H, uh, that means we reduce it first in the opposite direction and then increase it in the uh, positive direction, then uh, this is the path that it is going to trace. So, what we observe is that, that while increasing of H and decreasing of H, it exactly does not follow the same path. It follows a slightly different path and there is a residual flux which is present when your magnetic field intensity is 0 and further if you want the magnetic flux density to be 0 in the material, then there will be an HC, a coercive force which is required. So, that is your BH curve and uh, this is very, very important because the shape of it is um, important in choosing the material that would be suitable for your particular application. Different types of materials have different types of BH curves. Permanent magnet materials have uh, uh, BH curves which are much wider uh, whereas uh, uh, your uh, uh, which are ferromagnetic that means uh, which are uh, used as electromagnet then they get demagnetized when you remove the uh, electric current, then those have got different types of uh, BH curve as compared to your permanent magnet materials. Then let us come to reluctance. I already defined the reluctance. Reluctance is uh, given as equal to your LC mu AC. Now, it is understand in terms of this magnetic core. So, here uh, we have uh, uh, got a magnetic core, a simple magnetic core diagram is shown and uh, uh, this is your uh, uh, n number of turns which are wound on uh, this limb of the core and uh, let us say a current I is passed through it. Then what will happen is that it will establish a flux phi. And the path it has to trace this entire path that length is your LC. So, LC is the magnetic path length. And AC I I have told this before also to make it clear with uh, use of diagram. So, this is your cross sectional area AC. So, cross sectional area you can see here this is the cross sectional area AC and this whole length is your LC and mu is the permeability of the material which is used for making the magnetic core. Now, what is the meaning of reluctance? Reluctance is how much is the resistance the magnetic flux sees when it uh, flows through a particular magnetic core. Okay, so, it is something depends on the geometry as well as on the magnetic material. So, reluctance two things you should note that it depends on your core geometry and it also depends on the magnetic material. Now, there is another term which is associated with reluctance which is actually uh, inverse of your reluctance which is called as the permeance. Sometimes the manufacturers of these magnetic materials 
they give you the permeance instead of the reluctance. Now, this flux that is established in the magnetic core phi, this is uh, given as uh, equal to the MMF by reluctance and its unit is uh, in Weber's and it can be drawn like this uh, electrical equivalent circuit. So, this is your MMF F which is equal to N i, it is like a voltage source and flux is like the current and reluctance is like the resistance. So, you can draw an electrical equivalent circuit in this manner for this core. Then further let us say if you have a core of uh, this shape of this geometry and uh, a flux of uh, phi 1 is established here then this will get divided into two parts which is your uh, phi 2 and phi 3 and then it can be written as that phi 1 is equal to phi 2 plus phi 3 similar to your KCL equation and uh, further you can write it as uh, F1 by R1 is equal to F2 by R2 plus F3 by R3. 3. Okay. So, that is what uh, is uh, shown here this kind of uh, equivalent electrical circuit can be drawn here. So, this is your main MMF uh, which is being applied and uh, then this is the reluctance R1 over here of this path then you have reluctance R2 of this path and you have reluctance R3 of this path and the corresponding fluxes are phi 2 and phi 3. Further, let us talk about the importance of air gap. Now, air gap is something very much used for magnetic design in uh, inductors uh, of inductors and transformers in power electronics. Now, uh, why air gap is introduced? What happens is that your air gap, it uh, tends to increase the flux which can be passed uh, through that particular core. Okay. So, what are the benefits uh, and limitations of using air gap is that it uh, avoids core saturation. And uh, so, it provides higher levels of uh, flux density. So, higher flux uh, density B, B m will denote for uh, the magnetic material m, B m can be passed uh, through this uh, code if you are using air gap, but it reduces the value of L to certain extent, the inductance that uh, you can obtain from it. And also one more thing is that that this reluctance of uh, a core which has uh, got an air gap is uh, controlled by Lg. Lg is your air gap length. So, this is the air gap length Lg. So, reluctance can be controlled by Lg. That is uh, another uh, feature of it. Now, why it is uh, important? Now, reluctance of the air gap Lg by mu 0 Ac, that is the reluctance of air gap and reluctance of uh, the core, the rest of the magnetic material will be Lc minus Lg by your mu Ac. Okay. So, Lc is the total length of this core. Now, this Lg is usually very small, so this could be approximated as uh, Lc mu Ac. And uh, you can see that, that uh, this uh, reluctance of uh, this is going to be much higher than that of the core. So, reluctance uh, will be given as Rg plus uh, Rc, which will be almost equal to the reluctance of the air gap. And uh, this can be directly then controlled by Lg because as I already told you mu 0 is does not vary, whereas mu it does vary with the applied H. And 
Another uh, important uh, features is that that you have better thermal stability if you use uh, air gaps and uh, the permeability is, uh, is more stable because it is more uh, driven by the air gaps permeability and so reluctance is also stable. It is uh, less affected by other variations that may be taking place in the circuit. Now, because of this air gap another uh, thing that happens is your fringing effect. Uh, so, the flux uh, it uh, flows through this magnetic core, but uh, when you have an air gap it is always not uh, going to flow straight, but there will be a fringing effect that is going to take place. That means, this air gap uh, uh, will not be straight, but uh, will be fringing out from this uh, uh, area. So, this can then be represented by this um, equivalent circuit where you have this reluctance of the core and then you have two parallel paths one is of the air gap which is just uh, concentrated on the core area core's cross sectional area and the other part which is bulging out which is uh, your reluctance of the fringing part R f and that is called this flux is phi f and air gap flux is phi g and phi c will be the sum of these two. So, phi c is equal to phi g plus phi f and the reluctance will be total reluctance will be R c plus uh, R g parallel to R f. So, now if we do R g parallel to R f if we try to find out. So, that will be given as R g R f by R g plus R f and so we can write it as L g by mu 0 a c into L f by mu 0 a f. Now, uh, what is this uh, L f? So, this is your L g and this is your L f. This length is your L f and this length is your L g. And uh, so, the cross sectional area corresponding to your uh, this fringing is a f and a c is the cross sectional area of um, your core. So, L g by mu 0 a c plus L f mu 0 a f. If you solve it what you can write it as So, this uh, then you can see that is equal to R g by a factor which we call it as F f and what is this factor F f? It is the fringing factor. This F f is equal to 1 plus A f by L f by A c by L g and this is greater than 1. So, from there your inductance with fringing if we denote it as n f that will be equal to n square by the total reluctance r which is equal to n square by r c plus r g parallel to r f and this is going to be greater than n square by R c plus R g. This should be very clear from here that this is greater than 1. So, this is going to be less than your R g. This is less than R g. So, since this is less than R g. So, uh, uh, therefore, this L f is going to be greater when uh, if we would not have taken account of the fringing effect which is this is equal to L. So, L f is greater than L that means, the L where no fringing effect has been considered. So, uh, this uh, fringing effect uh, if you want for more accurate design you can take into account. Now, 
One more thing that you observe from here is that this is not something dependent on the material properties, but this fringing factor FF is dependent on the core geometry. So, it is completely dependent on the core geometry. So, based on different different core geometries, you can find out what is the fringing factor and uh, you can use that in your design process for better designs. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that your um, uh, we discussed your magnetomotive force, flux density, your uh, field intensity, magnetic field intensity and uh, then other important term is your permeability, very, very important term which denotes that how easily the material can be magnetized and to what extent the mag uh, material can be magnetized and then other important thing is your BH curve which uh, you should uh, note down that for different different materials the BH curve appears to be very different and uh, then it is another important term is your reluctance um, and it is uh, dependent on the core geometry and the magnetic material property. Thank you.